Well, welcome everyone to our midday service. Welcome to those of you who are here. Welcome to those who are joining us online. Yeah, can I get an amen? Uh, it is a, a slightly grey, damp, uh, cold day. I don't know about anybody else. I'm oh, feeling a bit cold. So if you need to, just in the service, feel free to get up, like stretch around, you know, walk up and down, walk, walk out, you know. <laughs> Whatever, uh, whatever helps. Uh, it's good. It's good to gather together. It is good to be. Uh, it is good to be here together, and um, it's good to be able to have people here and online. So it's wonderful. Thank you for joining with us. Uh, we we have a great treat uh, coming up next week. Hugh is going to lead the service. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! So uh, do do join us uh, next week. Do tune in. Uh, Hugh is going to be leading, starting off, off on a new series next week. So you have all that to look forward to. Um, but I'm afraid today you've got me. <laughs> and uh, we're finishing off our series looking at the one... <laughs> we're finishing off our series looking at the one another's of Scripture. Uh, so I'll be bringing us a passage from Hebrews um, in a moment. Uh, there aren't um, there aren't really uh, any notices particularly um, other than just to say over the course of the summer we're running uh, a variety of connect events these are opportunities to um, to meet socially with other people from around the church uh, uh, there's going to be a book club which will be happening regularly there'll be some walks into the forest the eco church group here have planned a prayer walk into the forest which is going to be a really wonderful time uh, there are other things, there's going to be some football and all that sort of stuff. Details are available uh, in the new sheet. Um, they will be coming up on our website as well. And um, we would just encourage you all in anything that takes a fancy, do come along. Uh, this is a great, the summer is a great opportunity for us to reconnect as a family because that's what we are, one to another. We, uh, in, in Jesus, we are adopted into one big uh, uh, extended family. Uh, and it and it is messy sometimes and, and we're different and we bump up against one another but it's also there's real beauty in that too and it is good for us to spend time together so please do uh, make the most of the opportunities as you would like to uh, we'll be following our regular service order um, which you can find on our website uh, if you don't already have it uh, but before we begin let's just take a moment's quiet just to still ourselves to allow the, the busyness of the week, the busyness of the day even, to just begin to uh, uh, recede, to, to let it begin to quieten, to fade, and to allow that knowledge and assurance of the presence of God, who is always with us, and yet sometimes we forget or are distracted or it gets crowded out, and we just allow ourselves to become aware again of the presence of God's Spirit amongst us. Jesus is alive and he is with us by his Spirit now wherever we are here on the high road in the homes as people join us whatever day of the week you're joining us whatever time the, the Spirit of the Lord is here he's with each one of us And Lord Jesus, we just say we worship you. We welcome you here today. We love you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Heavenly Father, we adore you. Thank you for your faithful, steadfast presence. Thank you for your goodness to us, your kindness, your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Amen. And so grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and, and also, also with you. you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. it. We pray together. We, we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. 
Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through jesus christ our lord amen Amen. blessed is the lord for he has heard the voice of our prayer therefore shall our hearts dance for joy and in our song we will praise our god and so that's what we're going to do Uh, so can i invite you to stand with me Those of you at home, as ever, we're relying on you to sing out at home uh, to make up for our lack here. We're not allowed to, but I will lead us in, uh, in, in Christ alone. And if you know the tune, you know the words, feel free to hum along or speak out the words under your mask. Uh, And let's use this time to really worship and lift up thankful hearts to Jesus for all that he has done. In Christ alone my hope is found, he is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, This is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. 
till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. So as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. So our uh, scripture reading from today for today is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, um, beginning at verse 6. So Christ is faithful as the Son over God's house, and we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. So as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the writer to the Hebrews says, encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened. I, um, I, I really love that verse, actually, the sense of as long as it is called today. You know, there is a day that we are given to live out our faith. There's a day that is given to put our trust in God. There is a day that is given to worship him and honour him and glorify him. There is a day that is given to build one another up, to walk alongside one another, to love one another. And that day is called today. And for so long as the day is called today, that is what we are to give our lives to. That is what we are to be found being spent for, living ourselves in service of God and in service of one another. That is the calling. That is what it is to be a Christian, is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus who each and every day took up his cross until the day where he physically took up his cross and walked to his death for you and for me, as our song declared so powerfully, I think, that by his blood, we have been bought for God irrevocably. We can never be taken out of his hand. And the the writer from the Hebrews quotes from Psalm 95. This is one of the things I, I, I love. We know, don't we, that the whole of this book has been given to us by God. And some of it we find harder to understand. Some of it is more complicated. Some, some of it is, frankly, quite bizarre. And yet, as the writer of the Hebrews says really clearly, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, Those words are taken from Psalm 95, written by the psalmist. But it was the Holy Spirit speaking through him who said, today, if you hear his voice, it is the word of God calling to us, not just as an example for us to look to, but but speaking to us directly into our lives today. um, Psalm 95 has a particularly um, fond place in my heart if... um, if you've uh, been in the in the Anglican Church any period of time and spent any time um, reading the Book of Common Prayer, saying morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer, um, Psalm 95 is spoken in morning prayer every morning. It's called the Venite, which literally just means come. It's the first the first word of the psalm. But it's a it's spoken each morning as a reminder that today is the day. 
Today is the day to walk in faith. Today is the day to put our trust in him. That there is a day that is given and it is today. And it is also uh, a call to not just believe, but to act upon our belief, to live in line with our faith, to live in line with the calling that Jesus has put upon our lives, that he has called us out of darkness into his glorious light. And today is the day. And each day we make a fresh commitment. You know, God's mercies are new for us every morning. And in response each morning, we are called to recommit ourselves to to afresh, hear his voice, hear his calling, respond and to say, yes, today I will follow you with all my heart and all my mind and all my strength and all my soul. Today is the day and I will give it to you. For so long as today is called today, I will follow you, Jesus. You know, it's, it's not about what we believed I feel like it's not about what we believed on yesterday or a year ago or when we first came to faith. Are our our lives aligned with Jesus today? Are we following him today? And you know, because it's never too late. It's never too late for any one of us to think, actually, I don't think I have quite been doing that. I, I know that I did believe and I know that I was following, but you know, over lockdown things have happened and, and I've had those pillars of my life the, the things I organize my life around they've sort of fallen apart or things haven't worked out the way that I thought and I'm, I'm not sure that really today I'm doing that and actually the call to us comes every day we can do it today we can say there's you know God's mercy is available to us through Jesus there is always forgiveness all we have to do is come and say Jesus I'm, I'm sorry but I'm going to recommit today I want to honour you and follow you today because that's the call. That's the call for each one of us. And it is never too late for us to respond to that call each and every day. And I think the writer in this passage is is, um, speaking about a daily call, if you like, to a daily battle. We, we all, don't we, we face daily battles and from one day to another, it might not be the same battle. It might, it, sometimes it is. Sometimes we have these, these, these periods in our life that they go on for a long time, don't they? And, and it feels like it will never end. And yet we know in Jesus there is always hope that this life is not all that there is, that whatever happens in this life, that is not the final word. The final word is spoken by Jesus when we stand before the throne. <laughs> And we long and we long to wait and hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my father's rest. And yet there are some battles that are day to day that we, we face the new things that come up or something that, that tries to, to, to throw us off course or to, to, to throw us out, out of kilter. The, the psalmist is calling back in these words that that are quoted from Psalm 95, he's calling back to Israel in the wilderness. And you probably know the story. Israel have been been freed from slavery in Egypt and, and they wander in the desert towards the promised land, the land that God told them he was going to give them as their inheritance. And it was a time of, it says it was a time of testing in the wilderness. The, the Israelites faced the test. Will they trust God in the daily battle of surviving in the wilderness? Will they trust God in the face of, of lack, in the face of want, want of water, want of food, want of shelter, want of comfort? Will they trust God in the lack? Will they trust God in the want, in the wilderness times? But it was also where they tested God, where they tested God by demanding signs, by demanding works, new miracles. He had done extraordinary miracles in Egypt, incredible works of power to bring them out. And that they didn't just leave with their tail between their legs, they didn't, they didn't leave as, as empty-handed slaves in the way they had lived in Egypt. They came out with with wealth that had been given them by the Egyptians. This is an extraordinary thing. And yet 
as they walked through the wilderness, they began to say, well, God, are you still here? Are you still with me? And I, you know, I, I think as ever, it, these, these stories, they're not just, as I was saying earlier, they're not just cautionary tales. They're not just, you know, look at how, how bad and faithless they were. Actually, the, the stories speak directly to our experience. When I know in my life, when I face times of wilderness, I'm tempted to do the same. I'm tempted to say, God, I know you've been faithful, but are you faithful today? Are you going to be faithful today in the battle that I face? Are you going to be faithful today in the wilderness times, in the desert? Are you still faithful? And of course, the answer is yes, he is. Am I? (laughs) Am I faithful in the wilderness? So often I'm not. It's in many ways, the the stories that we read in, in the in the Bible, these these historical accounts they are they're not just a they're not just a tale of a cautionary tale but it's like a mirror being held up to us saying isn't this what life is like isn't this what we are like when these things happen and yet we are being invited to a new way we're being invited to look in that mirror and say yeah god but i want to be faithful to you thank you like it, it helps us see the reality of our situation doesn't it it helps bring that new perspective in and you think oh gosh actually you know what, I can put my trust in God because he was faithful and he has been faithful all through the corridors of history. In all these, but in all the, the people's lives we read in here, God was faithful, even through some of the most difficult times. And so we can say, I have now seen the end from the beginning in this book and I'm going to put my trust in you today, even though it's hard and even though it feels faltering and even though I feel afraid. I think there's a daily call for a daily battle, but there's also, if you like, daily bread to sustain us in our daily call. Ultimately, that daily bread is Jesus who promises to sustain us in the wilderness, in the desert, to sustain us by his spirit, who he gives freely to us when we put our trust in him. You know, Jesus spoke of himself as being the daily bread that we need. He also spoke of the streams of living water that would flow within us through the Holy Spirit that we could drink from and be nourished by and sustained by. Come to me, Jesus said, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. His mercies are new every morning. And yet as ever, we are called, we are invited to step into the family business. We're called to be found doing what God does. And so the writer to the Hebrews says, encourage one another daily so that your hearts won't become hard. Because that was what happened to the Israelites. That's what happens to us, that we we get burdened by sin and by the deceitfulness of the world that we begin to question. You know, like Adam and Eve, right back at the beginning of the story, they say, oh, is is God really that good? Is he really that faithful? Are his words that true? That happens to every single one of us. And we can get drawn in by that line of thinking. If someone doesn't come alongside us and say, remember, remember the faithfulness of God. Remember the goodness that he has shown to you. Remember, 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 remember. We're called to come alongside one another, to join in with what the Spirit of God is doing in each one of our lives and to point out the drops of grace that he puts on our way, to point out the beauty of his presence in the midst of what can feel like often barren places, to point out the activity of God. To, You know, the Bible says that the enemy prowls like a lion, seeing who he can devour. And each one of us, if we're on our own, we are liable to be set upon. But as we stand together, banded together, we can defend one another. Because where one of us, uh, Sarah and I, in our relationship together, we've, we've kind of been walking this journey of faith together a long time now. We've experienced this just in, in our relationship and with other friends too, that where one of us is feeling weak and tired and afraid and, and is beginning to doubt the other one who is perhaps has a different perspective on the issue can stand as the strong one 
who can defend, who can, who can take the hit, who can, who can protect and say, no, you don't have to listen to that narrative, that version of story. That's not true. Look at this one. Look at this one here. That's what we're called to do for one another. And it's not complicated. It doesn't have to be profound or deep. But we just draw alongside one another and say, remember the story. Remember his faithfulness. He's not going to let you go. He never has. He never will. We can all appreciate the experience because we've all experienced it ourselves. Those moments of feeling like you're at the end and you don't know how to keep going. And so we don't draw alongside in a haughty way, in a, in a you know, oh, I'm going to look after you because you're struggling. It's a, I know what that feels like. Let me stand with you. Let me walk with you for this little bit, even just this little bit. Let me walk with you. Let's do this together, band together and walk the way that Jesus has called us to walk. <coughs> Let's be the encouragement that we know we will need one day from somebody else. I think that's the, that's the call on us. Be that encouragement that we know that we need. Reach out to that person. Sarah had an experience this, this week. Someone came to her mind. Uh, and so she just thought, I'll oh, quickly just message them and see how they're doing. And it was the answer to the prayer. They had been actually been having a really, really tough time. And they said, God, just please like, show me that someone's here with me. <laughs> show me that someone's standing with me. And they got this text from Sarah saying, how are you doing? And she's like, thank you. <laughs> we all have moments like that. We all, don't we? Let's today be the encouragement that we need. And if today you're in that place where you need the encouragement, <laughs> Come back here. Come back to this. Come back to the faith. Come back to, you know, come alongside someone who you know, who you trust. And say, I just need that bit of encouragement today. Could you give me that? Could you, could you walk with me? Let's never be afraid to ask. Because it's not, we're not called to do this on our own. It's not about being weak. It's about being aware of the battle and looking for the bread that Jesus offers us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that all through history you have been faithful. You are the God who never changes. We could never have imagined a God as good and as faithful as you a God as merciful and just as you thank you that you remain faithful to us even when we are not faithful to you and Lord just in our in the quietness of your own heart if there is someone that you know who is going through a tough time at the moment just i invite you just to to speak their name in your heart before god wherever you are today just to offer that person or maybe it's for you maybe there's a situation for you and you're just saying god i really need help with this thing in this battle i need your daily bread today i want to follow you And then we say, come Holy Spirit, fill each one of us, breath of God, breathe on us. On those people who we've spoken out before you in our own hearts, Lord, you hear. And Lord, you can reach into that person's life, into their situation, we pray. Spirit of God, come upon them today. Move in their life today. Thank you, Lord. And so gathering our prayers and praises into one. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To be with us, Spirit of God, nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving and sanctifying power. Speak to us, wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. Come upon us, fire from heaven. Send us out with love and courage. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. We proclaim not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for his sake. So let's join together in making this uh, affirmation of our commitment for today to live as disciples of Jesus. So will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer? With the help of God, we will. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and turn to the Lord? With the help of God, we will. Will you proclaim by word and example the gospel of Christ? With the help of God, we will. Will you serve others and love your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, we will. Will you seek to fully obey the Holy Spirit on all occasions? With the help of God, we will. Will you defend the weak and seek peace and justice? With the help of God, we will. Will you pursue a life saturated with God? With the help of God, we will. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Thanks be to God. Oh, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Thank you so much for joining us with us this week. We look forward to joining with you again next week. Take care.